Hello everyone. Let us solve your previous year JE questions from the chapter waves. Two sitar strings A and B playing the note dha are slightly out of tune and produce beats of frequency pi hertz. The tension of the string B is slightly increased and the beat frequency is found to decrease by 3 hertz. If the frequency of A is 425 hertz, the original frequency of B is. So two sitar strings A and B, they are playing the same note dha, but because of slight variation, they are producing beats of 5 hertz. So initially, the beat produced is 5 hertz and the beat is equal to difference in frequencies. So there are two possibilities. One is new A minus new B equals to 5 or new B minus new A equals to 5 depending on whichever is higher. Now the tension of the string B is slightly increased and the beat frequency is found to decrease. And we also know the relationship of frequency and tension that frequency is proportional to square root of tension. So now the second half helps us in finding out the answer as the difference between the two frequencies is reduced. New B must be having a smaller frequency than new A because by increasing new B, beat frequency is reduced. Now let us get into the options. See, initial condition, the frequency of A is 425. So what are the two options? So new A is given, which is 425. So the possible values of new B are either 430 or 420, which satisfies this condition. The difference between A and B is 5 hertz initially. Now, since tension is increased, its frequency will also increase. Therefore, the difference between new A and new B decreases. So if its frequency is 430, by increasing the tension, its frequency increases further. So difference between 430 plus and 425 is more than 5. So what happens in that case? Beat frequency increases. Since it is given that beat frequency decreases, so the frequency increases from 420 to 422. So beat frequency is now reduced. Therefore, the correct answer is 420 hertz. That is option D. Next question. A standing wave is formed by the superposition of two waves traveling in opposite directions. The transverse displacement is given by y equals 0.5 sine of pi pi by 4 into x cosine 200 pi t. What is the speed of the traveling wave moving in the positive x direction? So the displacement equation is given, which is y equals 0.5 sine of pi pi by 4 into x and cosine of 200 pi t. This is the equation representing a standing wave. Then what is the speed? So the question is with what speed the wave is moving in positive x direction. It doesn't matter in which direction the wave is moving, whether it is positive or negative, the wave velocity remains always v equals omega by k. So by these two, what is omega? It's coefficient of t, so 200 pi, and k value is coefficient of x, which is pi pi by 4. Pi pi cancels, so it is 200 by 5 is 40 into 4 is 160 meters per second. So it is speed of the wave in x direction. Option C is correct. Next question. Two wires W1 and W2 have the same radius R and respective densities rho1 and rho2 such that rho2 is 4 times rho1. These two are joined together at the point O as shown in the figure. The combination is used as a sonometer wire and kept under a tension T. 
the point o is midway between the bridges when a stationary wave is set up in the composite wire the joint is formed to be a node so at point o a node is formed then the ratio of number of anti nodes formed in w1 to w2 so how many number of anti nodes are formed in the first part to that of second part the condition is that since it is a sonometer wire both of these two wires w1 and w2 must have same frequency so f1 is equal to f2 and it is given that they are having same radius and length of each part of this wire is also equal therefore what we can write is the frequency in the each wire f1 and f2 so frequency f1 is equal to since it is stress string of same length let us say in the first part there are n1 number of loops are formed and n2 number of loops are formed in the second wire so loops means those many number of anti nodes are formed so we can write the l is equal on either wire so n1 by 2 l into square root of tension over mass per unit length mu1 mass per unit length is different as their densities are different equals to n2 by 2 l into root of t by mu2 but we know that mu can be written as density into cross sectional area since it is a wire of radius r area can be written as pi r squared and area of both the wires are equal only densities are different therefore pi r square and pi r square in the denominator of these two terms cancel giving us n1 the remaining things are all constant 2l tension tension so n1 times n1 by root of rho1 equals n2 divided by Rho two, area of cross sections are equal. Therefore, the ratio of n one by n two is equal to square root of rho one by rho two. And what is rho one by rho two from the given data? Rho one by rho two is equal to one over four. So it is square root of one over four. That is one by two. so the number of anti nodes formed in the two wires are in the ratio 1 is to 2 option b is correct next question a transverse wave is represented by y equals 10 by pi sin of 2 pi by t into t minus 2 pi by lambda into x for what value of the wavelength the wave velocity is twice the maximum particle velocity so from the given equation the amplitude of the equation is 10 by pi and omega is 2 pi by t and value of k is 2 pi by lambda and they are asking for what value of lambda wave velocity is twice the maximum particle velocity so wave velocity is equal to Two times maximum particle velocity. Since particle is performing simple harmonic motion, you can write this particle velocity and its maximum value as omega times amplitude. And wave velocity v is omega by k. So omega and omega cancels. And let's substitute the value of k, which is two pi by lambda. we get lambda by 2 pi equals 2 times a or lambda equals 2 into 2 pi into a so that is 4 pi and its amplitude is 10 by pi pi and pi cancels and 4 10 times is 40 meters so option a is correct next question the total length of a sonometer wire between fixed ends is 110 cm two bridges are placed to divide the length of the wire in the ratio 6 is to 3 is to 2 the tension in the wire is 400 newtons and the mass per unit length is 0.01 kg per meter what is the minimum common frequency with which three parts can vibrate so it's given that the tension in a string 
is 400 newtons length of the string is 110 centimeters and they are dividing this length 110 centimeters in the ratio 6 is to 3 is to 2 i will call each part of the length is l1 to l2 to l3 equals 6 is to 3 is to 2 and mass per unit length of the wire is given mu is 0 0.01 kg per meter now what is length of each part of the string the whole length 110 centimeter is divided into three parts by keeping two wedges so that the whole length 110 meter is divided into three parts let's calculate what is length of each part so l1 equals 6 over 11 into 110 that is 60 centimeters and l2 is similarly 30 centimeters and it is quite straightforward the sum of these ratios is 11 and l3 is 20 centimeters so the whole wire is divided into three parts one is almost more than 50 percent l1 and another is 30 centimeters the last part is 20 centimeters since the frequency is inversely proportional to the length and the largest length is having smallest frequency and the remaining should have larger frequencies the gcd that is the greatest common divisor of these three lengths is 10 centimeter therefore that must be the length of one loop therefore you can write length of one loop is 10 centimeters so this is equal to length of each loop therefore the frequency corresponding to that loop is equal to nu equals 1 over 2 times l into square root of t by mu that is equal to 1 over 2 times length is 10 centimeters so 10 power minus 1 meters into square root of tension is 400 divided by mass per unit length is 0 0.01 so i can write that as 10 power minus 2 so when it goes to numerator that would be plus 2 and here 1 over 2 and this is 10 into root of 400 is 20 and root of 10 power minus 2 is 10 power minus 1 so it is 2 10 times so 10 into 10 is 100 and you have another 10 here so it is 1000 hertz so the common frequency and minimum frequency will be 1000 hertz and that is the reason why we have taken the minimum length of a loop which is common for all the three wires is 10 centimeters so option b is correct next question in a transverse wave the distance between crest and neighboring trough at the same instant is 4 centimeter and the distance between a crest and a trough at the same place is 1 centimeter the next crest appears at the same place after a time interval of 0.4 seconds then the maximum speed of the vibrating particles in the medium is so it's given that the distance between crest and neighboring trough at same instant is 4 centimeter so in a wave the distance between crest and the neighboring trough so this distance is given and what is that equal to distance between maximum okay this distance will be half of the wavelength so lambda by 2 is given to be 4 centimeters and the distance between a crest and a trough at the same place is 1 centimeter so at the same place as time elapses the distance between the peak and the valley is 1 centimeter that means maximum displacement of the particle is 1 centimeter which implies amplitude of the particle is half of d so 0.5 centimeter 
the next crest appears at the same place after a time interval of 0.4 seconds that means the time period of the wave is 0.4 seconds then the maximum speed of vibrating particle in the medium particle speed is being asked and particle speed is equal to omega into amplitude omega is 2 pi by t into amplitude and what is t t is 0.4 and amplitude is 0.5 centimeters so what do we get multiply 10 on numerator and denominator so we get 2 pi into 5 by 4 so 2 2 times so that is 5 pi by 2 that is maximum particle velocity in the medium uh, this is the maximum speed of the vibrating particle in the medium so option 5 pi by 2 b is correct next question a sonometer wire of length 114 centimeter fixed at both the ends where should the two bridges to be placed so as to divide the wire into three segments whose fundamental frequencies are in the ratio 1 is to 3 is to 4 so it's given in the problem that length of the wire is 114 centimeters and we shall divide this whole length into three lengths l1 l2 and l3 such that the fundamental frequencies in these three segments is 1 is to 3 is to 4 so ratio between the frequencies which is fundamental frequency is given nu1 is to nu2 is to nu3 equals 1 is to 3 is to 4 and from the fact that frequency is inversely related to length i can write the ratio between the lengths as l1 is to l2 is to l3 is equal to 1 over 1 1 over 3 is to 1 over 4 as they are inversely related and you can write this as taking common denominator this is 12 is to 4 is to 3 to take away the fraction we get it in the form 12 is to 4 is to 3 now let's calculate the length of each segment of the wire l1 is equal to what part of the length 12 over 16 plus 3 is 19 into 114 and this length is equal to to calculate we get this to be 72 centimeters so l2 is equal to four parts of 19 into 114 you can write this as one third part of l1 1 over 3 l1 that is 72 by 3 which is 24 centimeters and the length l3 can be written as 3 by 19 into 114 that is same as l1 by 4 that is 72 by 4 which is 18 centimeters so now we know the lengths of the wire what must be the length of each part of the wire so if it is measured from one of the ends so one wedge must be placed at 72 centimeters first bridge and the second bridge must be placed at a distance 72 plus 24 centimeters from the one end so that is 96 centimeters if we measure from the other side this can be even written as first wedge must be placed at a distance of 18 centimeters and the second one at a distance of 18 plus 24 that is 42 so now let's look at the options so you don't have the second option 42 and 18 centimeters so the right option is one bridge must be placed at 72 centimeters another at 96 so the correct option is 72 and 96 option d